welcome back. It's an important night, kind of. It is. Come on. Let's talk about you and whether if you can't bear to jump on the Trump train and the thought of riding with Biden gives you slow motion sickness, our next guest has a ticket to ride just for you. Liberty lovers can fly above the fray on the Joe Jorgensen jetliner. The Libertarian presidential candidate is on the ballot in all 50 states. And spoiler alert, she's not just a spoiler. Let me bring her in, party people. Here she is, Joe Jorgensen. Welcome back, Joe. Hey, so glad to be here. The biggest fight that I get in with people on Twitter, aside from <laughs> the, an interview that I had last week, was about third party voting. Because I feel yeah. like if you like a candidate, it's your vote, you own your body, you have agency over your own choices, therefore you have every right to cast a vote for whomever you wish. And there is this mentality <laughs> that either Democrats or Republicans own your vote and you are beholden to vote in a way that benefits only them. What do you have to say about that? Oh, you're so right, Kennedy. It is so entrenched. I can't tell you how many radio shows and podcasts I've been on where the interviewer will ask me, so who do you take the most votes from, Democrats or Republicans? And, you know, I, I first want to say, well, wait a minute. I'm not taking votes away from anybody. Those are their votes. They own those votes and they have the choice. But that just gets back down to the false binary, you know, system that we have. Of course, we have to have a system in which the Democrats and Republicans have to pretend to be at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. have to pretend to have completely different platforms, even though they both want to spend our money, they both want to control our lives, neither one is going to bring the troops home. So they got to create drama somehow. And that's absolutely right. And that's the biggest issue for me. And that's how I decide who I'm going to vote for, at least right now, uh, particularly having school age children, is who is spending the most money uh, without a plan? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to pay for it in the future? And we're not going to. Uh, China is going to owe our own, rather, our debt. And that, to me, is much more morally reprehensible than the idea that my vote belongs to somebody else. Now, do you talk to Howie Hawkins at all? He is the Green Party presidential candidate. You know, I sat next to him in a debate last March, a third party debate, and that, that's been it. Uh, Ralph Nader, who ran um, mm -hmm. as he, what, what, what party was he? Was he a Green Partier in 2000? I was on a speaking tour with him and Winona LaDuke, who was his vice presidential candidate, his nominee. Um, he said that this is a horrible year for third party candidates. And uh, Marquette University law professor said that's because when Democrats lose, as they did in 2000, uh, when they win the popular vote but lose the electoral vote, the next election cycle, four years later, third party support drops. Is there any way of mm -hmm. lifting that back up again? Well, I hope so. And, you know, I have the advantage this year in that last time Donald Trump ran as a Republican, but he ran as an outsider. And he said, look, I'm not a professional politician. I'm a businessman. I know how to balance a budget. I know how to cut spending. And, oh, by the way, I'm going to bring the troops home. But he's done none of that. And so the reason the polls got it wrong is because he did attract many people who had never voted or hadn't voted in 20 years. So now what I'm telling those people is, hey, you've already dusted off your voter registration card, you know, now come vote for the real outsider, the person who's really going to cut government. Because as we saw with Trump, he acted just like every other professional Republican. He increased the deficit at a faster rate than Obama. And by the way, that was before the pandemic. What what are you doing to break late deciders in your favor? Well, first of all, we're, we're still campaigning. I was just in a rally in North Carolina last night. In fact, I've been hearing where the other two candidates are, and I've basically been to those same states. So we're still out there campaigning. We're still out there with social media. We're still just trying to get the word out. And I'm talking to you, Kennedy. That's right. Have you talked to Gary Johnson at all? He was the uh, Libertarian nominee in 2012 and 2016, former governor of Ye New Mexico. Where's Aleppo? Yeah. <laughs> I called and asked him for his endorsement, mm -hmm. and he is just, I, I, everybody kept telling me he's the nicest guy, and they were absolutely right. He was just so nice and generous with his time, and just a, a really fun guy to talk to. So uh, absolutely, uh, he said he'd endorse me, yeah. and uh, great guy. That makes me so happy. I am a big fan of Gary Johnson. <laughs> he's a celiac triathlete. Yes. And I have a soft spot in my heart for uh, for those people. Joe Jorgensen, best yeah. of luck. Uh, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming back on this all-important night. Good luck. 
Joe20.com. Thanks. Go for it. All right. And that's Joe with no E. You leave the E off for saving. <laughs>